there, my name is Katie Saint. Today I want to talk to you about divorce and um, just the ins and outs, in and outs of that, how to talk to your kids about it, how to set up your home successfully so that your kids are impacted by it as little as possible. This is a difficult topic, but with divorce rates being at 60%, um, this is a really valuable topic because it affects a lot of people. And so I want to go over just some really important things to talk about with your kids and um, how to respond to different problems that come up and things like that. So the biggest thing from a mental health perspective that we need to make sure our kids understand is that it's not their fault. Now, you may think that your child, this sort of thought process didn't occur to your child, but a lot of times children don't talk about that. Um, they just internally believe it, and they carry that with them throughout their life. And so it's important that we have these blunt conversations with our kids, explaining to them that it's not their fault and that... Um, divorce happens and it can never be the children's fault. So yes, it's true that kids add stress and kids make relationships harder sometimes. This is a true thing. But children never cause divorce no matter what their behavior problems are. So the next thing that you really need to talk about is that they will still be loved. So one fear or insecurity that comes about um, after a divorce in children is that if you quit loving my dad or if you quit loving my mom, will you quit loving me? And so to parents, sometimes this seems obvious, like, of course not. I will love you forever and always, no matter what. However, that's not obvious to kids. Human beings are naturally insecure. Human beings naturally assume the worst sometimes. So to a child, it seems like a logical conclusion that if you quit loving my dad or my mom, you'll quit loving me someday too. So that's why this is super important to get talked about so that you can ease their fears and you can help them to understand that that's not the case, that you're going to continue to love them and their other parent is going to continue to love them too. So the next thing that's really important to talk about is the reason for the divorce. Um, and this needs to be talked about really carefully. So say something really tough happened, like um, somebody got cheated on or, you know, like, Say there was some some bad stuff that went down and you have um, you have some legitimate reasons to say mean things about your um, child's parent. It's really important that you protect your child from um, bad talking that parent. So these things have to be talked about carefully. So um, in the book that I wrote on grandparent divorce, um, this is something I talk about. And here's an example of a quote um, that you could say to your kids. So it says, well, sometimes people try and try to get along and nothing works. No matter what they did, they didn't, they weren't able to solve the problems in their relationship. When this happens, some people choose to live in separate houses. This is called divorce. So that's kind of a more neutral way to describe what happens in a divorce situation. It's important to not say, well, if your mom didn't suck at relationships, if your dad didn't cheat on me, then we'd still be married. Um, those kind of statements can be really damaging to kids Every human being naturally wants to love their parent, no matter how dysfunctional their parent might be. And so anything that is said negatively against that parent 
causes a lot of stress and conflict internally in someone. And so that's why we have to be careful what we talk about and how we say it. So um, the next thing that's really important to talk about is how the divorce will affect them. So children need to know, especially children with special needs, need to know about how, like, what's going to change. You know, are they going to live in a different house? Are they going to, like, what's the arrangement going to be? Is it going to be one week with mom, one week with dad? You know, you need to break this down for your child so they know what to expect. Let them know what all the changes are going to be and anything that pertains to them, anything that will affect them, you know, have that conversation, give them that preparation. So um, the next thing you need to do is validate their emotions. And this can be really hard because divorce is a trauma. It's hard on everyone. And so it's hard if you're going through the divorce to be super supportive of your kids emotions because they might conflict with your emotions but it's super normal for your child to be angry for your child to be sad for your child to be relieved for your child to be happy you know it's common for people to have a storm of emotions that fluctuate and change based on the day so make sure that you're supportive of this that you allow them to express it and that you never punish them for any of the emotions that they feel. Now, I'd like to make the distinction that it is okay to punish behavior. If a child is inappropriate, uh, say for example, they are acting out and they're hitting and things like that, that's not acceptable. We want your children to learn that if you're struggling, it's not okay to hit. You still need appropriate behavior when you're struggling. So we're validating the emotions, but we're not validating inappropriate behavior. So make sure you make that distinction. So the next thing that you can do is point out the positives um, that the child will experience. So for example, they might have two bedrooms. They might have two Christmases. Um, again, in the book Grandparent Divorce, it breaks down, um, you know, kids being excited about getting to eat pie once at grandma's house and once at grandpa's house. And so they get twice as much dessert, and that's a special treat. Um, you know, so finding anything to point out to the kids about it being positive is really valuable just to help them see that it's not all bad. You know, there's there's good things too. Say there was a lot of conflict in your home. You can point that out and be like, you don't have to listen to mom and dad fight anymore. And so we can have a more peaceful home. You know, so whatever positives you can draw from are good. But again, remember, don't bash your child's parent because that's harmful. So the next thing I want to talk about is... Um, what you do if your um, children are displaying behaviors related to the divorce. So I want to start with infants. So it would benefit you um, and your infant to keep routines the same as much as possible. So keep comforting um, blankets and toys around. Um, don't be afraid to be extra affectionate to your infant just to help them feel more reassured. Um, send those comfort items back and forth between houses. All of these things will help your child adapt and adjust to the changes. They're too young to explain what all is going on. So um, just do the best you can to comfort them and to protect their environment so it's as similar as possible. For the next age group, I want to talk about toddlers. And so um, they might need more quality time. They might be extra behavioral. Schedule extra time in with them so that you can give them that attention that they need. They may, they may need extra reinsurance. They might be more insecure. Be extra affection both um, verbally and physically. Let them know how much you love them. 
give them hugs and kisses, you know, just give them that extra reassurance. Um, also be patient of, with signs of regression. It's really common that kids will regress. So say, for example, they were potty trained and then they start having accidents. Stuff like that is normal. So be patient with it. Recognize that it's common. Try to address it, but not in a harsh way. So um, also understand that your child's pretty likely to catch up. So if they have some regression, that's normal. So try to work with it, try to help them make up for it. But typically kids do catch up if they are in a supportive environment. So if they don't catch up though, reach out for help. There's a lot of people, whether it's ABA therapists or counselors, different things like that, that can help you figure out how to best meet your kids' needs. So for preschool and elementary age children, they're going to need a lot more verbal reassurance. You're going to need to have a lot more conversations with them about what's going on and that they're still loved and that it's not their fault. Um, provide them the opportunity to talk. If they're not super open about it, if they don't talk about it much, allow them to write about it or even give them clay and or Play-Doh and like allow them to build things to express their emotions. It's really important they get that their thoughts and fears and things like that out. If you feel like you're being unsuccessful at getting them to open up, go see a counselor. There's a lot of really good children counselors um, that can help them open up and process these big emotions. So for teens, um, it's more common that they're going to shut down and block you out. Um, you might see some behavioral issues such as um, drinking, drug use, um, increased sexual activity, things like that. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, you can help curb that by giving them an opportunity to express their thoughts and feelings. They might give you more attitude. They might be mad at you. They might be really uh, offended that you got a divorce. They might blame you for the divorce. Don't take this stuff personal. This is a normal reaction from a teenager. Keep in mind that their brain hasn't fully developed yet and this is a hard time for them and they don't know how to process it. And so they're gonna have a huge range of emotions. So try to support those emotions. You don't need to support disrespectful behavior, but validate that they probably have a storm of emotions and that this is a hard time for them and that it's okay for them to feel those things. Um, you know, if they don't want to open up to you, bring them to a counselor. See if a counselor can get them to open up and process those emotions. Um, so sometimes... A family friend, if you have someone who you think um, is a healthy person who could maybe take them out to eat and spend some extra time with them, um, they might feel more comfortable opening up to somebody other than you guys um, because they might not want to hurt your feelings or they might not feel comfortable that they can be totally honest. Um, so, you know, uh, just look at, look for other options like that to, um, to see how you can get them to be supportive, how you can get them to open up, things like that. So some ad additional advice that I'd like you to consider is that the sooner you have a plan, the better. So I understand that sometimes divorces are really complicated and they get drawn out and it's hard to make decisions, especially if you're not getting along. But if we're looking at what's best for the children, it's really important that we have a plan as soon as possible. Because as soon as we can create a new normal for them, then they can adjust to it. The longer that they're in transition and the longer that they don't know what's going on or what the pattern's going to be, the more stress it is on them and the more likely we are to see some negative side effects of divorce. So if we can quickly create a new plan and create um, a new normal for the kids, 
this is going to help them adjust. So if it's possible, keep the same routines and the same rules at both houses. I know in a lot of situations this isn't possible, but when there's a contradiction like that, we often see an increase in behaviors. So it benefits both parents to find a compromise, otherwise both parents are likely to see an increase in problem behaviors. So do your best to create um, as much similarity as possible in both homes. If this is impossible for you, just do your best to make your home consistent and that'll help. Unpredictability in childhood can be hard on kids and so um, the more that you can um, make your home predictable in the context of rules and expectations, um, things like that, that's really going to help. Um, one thing that really helps too is making a visual calendar for when your child will be where. So one thing that kids sometimes feel when they have two homes is that they have no home. So they feel like they're living out of a backpack um, and they never know when they're going to be where. So anything you can do to address those concerns is going to help your child. Um, so making it more predictable, making both places feel like they're home and giving them ownership in all of that kind of stuff, even if it's as small as letting them have um, say in decorating their room, things like that. All of that kind of stuff will help. The next recommendation that I have is allow your child to have an item to take with them if they miss you. So it's really common that kids struggle. They're used to seeing their parents every day and then you divorce and then they don't get to see their parents every day. So they might miss you. So please be understanding of that, even if their child, if your child is missing your ex. You know, allow them to have a picture, allow them to contact that parent, you know, allow them those comfort items or activities to help them deal with the fact that they don't see that parent as much as they used to. That can be hard on kids. Um, so do your best to be supportive of that, even though that might be difficult for you because of the complications of what's going on in your relationship. Um, again, I'd like to reiterate, don't talk bad about your ex. You might be in a lot of pain. They maybe hurt you in really bad ways. You might have a really valid reason for leaving that person. But it's still harmful to your kids to talk bad about one of their parents. So now the catch-22 of this conversation is when your child gets old enough, there sometimes a parent can be hurtful to the child. So take, for example, um, a mom who keeps making promises to a kid and doesn't follow through with them. She keeps telling him, hey, I'm going to visit you this weekend and then doesn't show up. And so the kid is hurt and the kid feels rejected and thinks that his mom or dad doesn't love him. In situations like this, it's valuable to explain to the child that this isn't a rejection of you. This is that parent's own dysfunction. And so, but that conversation can't happen until a parent is older, or I'm sorry, until a child is older for them to be able to comprehend that. But it's an important piece of information because otherwise they will conclude they are the reason that their parent is rejecting them. They will conclude that they are unlovable and that they are the reason that they never see their parent. If they were more lovable, if they did better at XYZ, their parent would still be in their life. Those are natural things that people think and feel. So we need to address that once the child gets to the age where they can comprehend those kind of conversations so that your child doesn't conclude those things and that they recognize that it sucks your mom or your dad doesn't come around anymore, but that's not about you. That's not because you failed. 
that is their own choices, that is their own dysfunction keeping them away from you. So um, the next thing um, that I want to reiterate is, again, you need to validate your child talking about their feelings. As long as they're being respectful, it's really important that you don't punish them when they open up. Some things might be hard for you to hear because this is a hard time for you too. But in order for your child to process those emotions and to heal from all of the changes that they're going through, it's really valuable for them to be able to talk and to be able to be real about what they're feeling. That's how they're going to get through those tough emotions. So um, when you're talking about why you split up, depending on the age, you're going to share different information. But keeping it simple is valuable. Um, not blaming is, is valuable. Not saying it's one person's fault, even if you feel like it is. All of those things are going to help your child accept it a little bit more. Um, and again, um, consider counseling for you, for your, for you and your ex-spouse. You know, maybe you need some mediation to learn how to co-parent. Um, consider counseling for the kids. You know, all of these things are going to be really helpful to address. Um, you know, to help them process through this. Some families will create check-in times where they can um, just talk about their emotions, talk about how they're doing, things like that. So feel, feel free to create some spaces like this that are going to make it safe for your child to open up, to talk, and to you know, process what they're going through. So alrighty, um, that, that is the overview of um, what I wanted to share about divorce. Um, this is a common subject. It's a hard subject. It's hard on everyone. Um, so I just want to make sure we're working through it in the best way possible so that everybody transitions through it as well as possible. All right. Thank you so much for your time.